All right, this is version 5.0 of Scribematic, and I'm going to give you a quick tour. Let me show you how to use this. So you're going to log into Scribematic. If you don't have an account, you just hit Try It Free. It's really easy. You can log in with either your Google account or a normal email. <clears throat> if you want to book a demo, you can click this button. It'll take you to our calendar where some of our representatives will be able to walk you through how to use it specifically for your case. I would recommend that everybody who's interested in this books a demo. It'll be about 15 minutes to half an hour, and one of our representatives will help you get set up and get everything working for you, particularly for your specialty. So once you're logged in, this is what you're going to do is you're going to come up to the top here, and after you've looked through HIPAA and everything, you're going to go to the recording screen. This is where all of your patients are going to show up. They're going to be outpatient, inpatient, or dictations. That's how we have it organized right now. So on my outpatient, you see I've already done one patient. I've seen patient one. And you'll notice that once you see a patient, it'll delete the note 72 hours later. So you need to copy that into your EHR. But So I'm going to go to outpatient. I'm about to go see a patient. Um, his name is George. He says he's got a little bit of a stuffy nose and sore throat. I'm going to go see him, and uh, I'll, I'll walk you through this as I do. So I'm going to click Start. I'm going to say George as the name of the patient, or you could say Patient 2, or however you want to do it. <clears throat> now, once I hit this microphone, it's going to start recording everything in the room. And you don't have to hold this in between you and the patient, your microphone or your phone or your laptop or whatever you're recording it on. You can put it on the desk you know, as long as it can hear what you guys are saying, it'll be fine and pick it up. Now, if you record, and as I do this, you may see that there will be some errors. It'll try to write a transcription right here. But these errors um, in the transcription, don't worry about them. The AI will fix them all once we finalize the note. The transcription you see is only a low-powered transcription with not a lot of AI power behind it and it's just there to show you that your microphone is working. If you hit this microphone button and text doesn't start showing up when you're talking, you see how text starts showing up when I'm talking? This is just showing that my microphone and the system is working correctly. So you can pause it and you can go back in and see the patient and you could even have multiple patients and go back in, you know, go back and do different recordings with multiple patients. But anyway, I'm ready to go see George. And you'll see we'll talk about a lot of random things such as this, and it'll be able to pick out the important parts of the medical note. So let's go see George. Hey, George, how's it going? All right, sounds good. All right, now that I've finished the note, I click that Finish button, that little square button at the bottom, and then it gives me this option to finalize. I'll finalize the note. I'll click, this is a guy, this is he, him. And then I can choose which sections I want in the note. So it'll just have checked whatever you had checked last time, so you don't have to keep rechecking what you want to check. So in my notes, I like to have a chief complaint. I like to have a history of present illness. I like it to be pretty concise, my history of present illness. So I'm just going to use the normal button. If you like to have really long history of present illnesses and you see your patients, you talk to a patient for an hour and you like to have everything in there or you like to have a longer history of present illness or the normal isn't working for you, go ahead and click extensive. If you're talking to a patient that says, Hey, Doc, I have depression, I have acid reflux, I have a heart issue, and I have a thyroid problem, and I hurt my ankle, and I want to talk to all of you about all, or you about all of those, then you would go ahead and click this multi-complaint, and it'll list all of the different uh, complaints that they have and do a history of present illness briefly for each of the different complaints. But for now, I'm just going to go with normal. I would like to just show you what happens when I click past medical history, social history, and you'll see what happens with that. 
um, a review of systems. I'll do that on the next iteration. And I'll also show you an exam on the next iteration. I'm just going to want a assessment and plan and some patient instructions here. So with the assessment plan, you can either have it combined or separate. I'm just going to do combined so I have it all in one section because that's how I like to do it. But you can have them be separate sections if you want by just clicking the separate button there. So I'm going to hit submit. It's going to go through. It'll send our note to the AI and it'll take a couple seconds usually. And here's our note. So a chief complaints, sore throat. George presents the office of a sore throat that's been present for two days. Describes a sore throat uh, not, as not as severe as previous episodes of strep throat. He has taken ibuprofen, which provided some relief. George denies being around sick individuals and reports living with his wife and two children who currently are not sick. He mentions feeling a little stuffy and experiencing a headache. He also reports poor sleep and mild fatigue. Okay, so there's our history of present illness, past medical history. So if you click a section and it doesn't and you didn't talk about that section at all it's just going to say not applicable now that's a reason the reason we do that is cuz there's some people with EHRs that they want to have a section even if it's not applicable and be able to put that in their note so that's why I wanted to show you what happens if you click a section that you didn't discuss okay so we have the social history we talked a little bit about his life and it see it pulled that he's a contractor as his occupation here's my assessment and plan sore throat plan perform rapid strep test flu test and covid test if positive for flu advise george to rest for a week and take ibuprofen also tamivir and tamiflu is not recommended due to the timing of the visit fair enough so that is basically the plan that we came up with now let's say you want exactly the transcript you can click right here and you can see the full transcript of the note. This is word for word everything that we said um, during this note. And you can just copy the word for word transcript if that's what you're interested in. Now let's pretend that this is my EHR. The easiest way to get it into your EHR is to just click copy all. You get a free text note in your EHR and you just paste it into your EHR and it formats the note just perfect for you to paste it right into your EHR like this and you can see here's the note now if you want it to push directly into your EHR instead of clipping copy all and then hitting command V which is very easy it's very fast to just do this copy all and command V into your EHR and have your note in there and sign it but if you want to push it into your EHR directly from Scribematic with an integration we can set that up with your EHR. Um, some EHRs have APIs that are easy to work with. It's probably going to take several months, and if you're at a hospital or you're at a clinic and you have an IT team, it's probably going to take several months and a couple of meetings to be able to set it up to, to push directly to your EHR. Um, and this is the case for all AI systems like this right now is that if you want to integrate with your EHR so it's only one push it'll be a couple meetings and probably a couple of months we're happy to do it but that's what it's gonna that that's what it's gonna take so in most cases we suggest that hitting this copy all and just putting that into your EHR like that is fast enough because it takes you two clicks instead of one click and you avoid having to deal with uh, trying to go through the whole process of getting a specific integration with your IT in your clinic, uh, which can be a, which can be a slow process. Anyway, so let's uh, let's talk a, about a couple more of these features here. This regenerate note. Now these are all pro features, by the way. If you're just on the basic plan, you can't use the regenerate note. You can get a note, but you can't regenerate a note, and that's because it's expensive for us to generate these notes. Um, we use a lot of computer power when we do that, and so that's why the pro plan is more expensive, is because it has some of these features that allow you to use more of the AI power and regenerate the note. 
So anyway, I'm going to regenerate the note. So basically what that is, it lets me select what I want to have in the note another time. So I'm not going to have a past medical history. I'm going to go ahead and make an extensive history of present illness. And I'm going to add a review of systems. So basically the review of systems, you can put a template of which systems you want to have it review. I didn't ask him a lot of questions about his specific systems in this visit, and so it'll probably just use whatever I have as the default um, in my template. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second when I generate the note. Um, I'm going to click exam, and I'm going to use my default exam template also. Basically, what the exam is going to show is it's going to be similar, that it's going to go through the different systems that I put in the template. And if I said something as the clinician about one of those systems, it should show up in the exam. Once I did the exam, as long as I vocalized it, that's the key. You got to vocalize it. All right. And I'm going to add a section called patient instructions. So patient instructions basically is going to give you a section that you could give to the patient. Um, it's basically just going to tell the patient what they need to take away from this visit or what they need to do. Um, now, of course, you want to read all of this before you give it to the patient and make sure it's all accurate. But we, we say Scribematic will get you probably 90, 95% of the way there, um, which is probably more than a human scribe <laughs> most of the time. But you still do need to review everything. So I'm going to click Submit send this back to the AI and regenerate it again with all these sections. Now if you're on Pro you can generate your notes as many times as you want. Alright, so here we see we have our extensive history of present illness. Um, it wasn't that long of a visit so it's only slightly longer than our normal version of the history of present illness. We're gonna scroll down, we've got our review of systems and here's the exam. Alright, so the different sections that we did here, normal cephalic, atraumatic, eyes, pearl, ENT, airway patent, no strider. And here's the one thing that I actually did here <laughs> is I checked and he did have some swollen lymph nodes around his throat. I think that'll show up in the next section right here. Um, assessment and plan is still the same. Patient instructions, it's going to give George some instructions. It's based on your symptoms and examination findings, likely that you have the flu. We perform rabbit strep flu and COVID test to confirm diagnosis. Flu is positive. I recommend you uh, rest for a week and take some ibuprofen for symptom relief. Anyway, so it'll give him all that information that we talked about so he can remember it. Now, one more interesting thing is if you start to make really complex notes or you talk to a patient for an hour or two hours, you can use this feature called the extra AI power. It's not always going to give you a better note. It's going to give you, it, it, it might give you a better note if you're not getting the note that you want from having a really long conversation. But it's not always going to give you a better note. You know, the AI isn't always going to write the same note every time. Sometimes it's going to make some mistakes. It's really, really good. But this extra AI power, if you see the, if you're having problems with the normal AI, you can try the extra AI power and see if it, um, see if it gets something right that the normal one didn't and vice versa. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that just so you can see what happens when I check the extra AI power. And instead of taking, you know, three seconds like the other one, it may take a minute. It may take a couple minutes if we're going to use the extra AI power version. And so that's the biggest downside of the extra AI power. But even then, it won't always be a more accurate note either using the extra AI power. All right. So we've got our history of present illness, chief complaint, social history. Oh, it threw into the review of systems that uh, there's some fatigue and poor sleep. Perfect. It did get the enlarged lymph nodes on the neck there. Our assessment and plan broke it out there, and we've got some patient instructions. So, anyway, this is the note with extra AI power versus the normal note. And, you know, say, oh, I don't like how this note looks. Well, 
you got a couple options. If you don't like how this note looks or there's a mistake, you can regenerate the note again. You can pick different sections. You can switch between extra AI power and normal power. Or we have this feature here called Talk to Your Note. So a patient's male contractor presents a two-day history of sore throat. It started two days ago and has not improved. All right. Well, let's say that I'm looking at this and I think that this is wrong. It's not. It did a great job. But let's say, you know, for some reason I see a mistake or something's not written the way that I want it or the patient calls me and I want to... I, I want to change something in the note, or I, I, call, I get called back in to see the patient and want to change something in the note. Let's say he does not deny any sick contacts at home. So it says he denies any sick contacts at home. There's a little pertinent negative there. But instead of denying sick contacts at home, let's say I go talk to him again, and he says, actually, um, I have four kids they all go to daycare and they're all super sick right now. Well, I want to put that in the note. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this talk to your note and I'm going to begin this recording in the talk to your note. Change the note so that it does not show that the patient denies having sick contacts at home and let it show in the history of present illness that he actually has four sick children all going to daycare right now. So now you see that we've changed it. We use the talk to your note, and instead of saying he denies having sick contacts, it says he reports that his four children in daycare are also sick with similar symptoms. So you can use the talk to your note here and go through and change everything in the note if you want. Now remember, the talk to your note is only going to change things in your note. It's not going to go back into your transcript and pull things out of the transcript. You can't say, go back to the encounter and check out and remind me if X, Y, and Z was said in the encounter, you'd have to go down to the transcript to check that out. The talk to your note is only going to deal with things that are in the actual note and things that you told it in this talk to your note screen. All right. <clears throat> so the next thing that we need to talk about are templates. So there are three types of templates currently. We have exam templates, we have review of system templates, and we have mirror templates in 5.0. So, let's start with the exam templates. In an exam, basically what you're going to do is you're going to create a template that shows the different systems you're going to check out, and specifically what the default should be in those templates or those defaults should be in the exam. So it's got to look like this, general. And so the default, if I don't say anything, you can either say, you know, you, what you should say is well-appearing, non-toxic, no acute distress. Head, normocephalic, atraumatic, eyes, pearl, E-O-M-I. So this is what you want to see in the default template. Now, for example, I made an ortho exam template. And basically all I'm checking in the ortho template is external rotation and internal rotation. And these are 65 degrees, and that's, that's what I wanted as the default there. Now, you can go into these sample templates. We have some sample templates in here. So, for example, this is a full knee exam template. We have a stroke scale exam template, a pelvic exam template. And some of these, you can go back in to your recording, and you can see where the exam is. Um, and you can select it here. If I wanted to do a pelvic exam, I might put like specialized exam here instead of just normal exam. Or maybe I want a normal exam and an ortho exam or something like that in my note. So that's how you use these templates on the exam section. If you want to use one of these sample templates, like for example, say I wanted to do a spine exam, I would just hit this plus button. It'll save it into my collection of templates. So if I go back, you see now I have the spine exam template. And now this template will show up if I try to regenerate this note right in here. There's my spine exam template. So I can say I can have a specialized spine exam there. So that's the exam template. Now if I want to have a review of systems, 
you know, right now I just have this default review of systems here, where I have constitutional, you could say he's got fever, malaise, head, headaches, facial pain, and you want to have some kind of default here. You can either just type out the default or you can put the default in brackets. Now what the brackets are going to say is that these are possible options. If you just put the default, like you see in our exam template, this is what it's going to write if nothing else is mentioned. It's going to write one of these things as a default. Okay, but you see here we have these brackets. These brackets, fever, malaise, that's not the default. You know, patient, that's not the default. That's a, that's a positive. But if you put something in brackets, that's going to say, hey, these are possible things that you could put for this section. And that's how we like to do this uh, uh, review of systems is it has possible positives in the section. And again, you know, you can go and see we have a couple examples here. Say, for example, if you want to have a neuro template for review of systems. <clears throat> so that brings us to the final and most complicated type of template, which is the mirror template. Now, doing a note like this in normal outpatient mode and using these sections is probably most of the time, if you're just doing a normal outpatient mode, note going to give you the best results it's going to be fast it's going to um, be fairly accurate but you also have the option to use mirror mode and you see how it gets rid of these other types of notes if you click mirror mode and then it gives me all of my mirror templates so mirror mode is not for the person who's doing a normal outpatient visit mirror mode is for the person who is doing a specialized visit and has a note that doesn't look like this, that doesn't have a history of present illness, that doesn't have a social history, that do doesn't look anything like this, <clears throat> or you have very specific requirements for one of these sections that most clinicians do not, or you just want to see your notes in a very specific way, then the mirror template is what you should use. So. Here's how you do a mirror template. <clears throat> and what a mirror template is, is you are going to end up making a template, but not just for the review of systems, not just for the exam, for the whole note. And it's kind of like you want to mirror this structure of a note instead of going with the way that we normally do notes. So we have a default template which is an ear, nose, and throat visit. And then we have some other templates, and then we have some sample templates. Let me show you, let me show you what uh, a soap note mirror template would look like. Okay. Now, again, if you're just going to do a normal soap note, I would recommend that you use the normal outpatient recording rather than a mirror template. But just so that you can see how to make a mirror template, this is how you would do a soap note. So you can give commands to the AI in the SOAP note. For example, as my AI scribe instructions are to return only the categories of subjective, objective, assessment, and plan. Now you can tell it here in the subjective section. I want detailed subjective complaints and pertinent negatives. Include review of records and studies performed prior to this encounter, including objective. Include the notes in the beginning of this section. So this is how you would make a SOAP note template in a very specific way that you want to do it. So for example, the reason you would use this template is if you want your assessment and plan and you have the major problem abnormality diagnosis and then the plan. Major problem plan listed like this in the assessment and plan and the way that we normally do it doesn't work for you. Now remember if you're using a mirror template it's likely that it might be slightly less accurate than using the normal outpatient recording. But it'll put it in the specific format that you want. And as we get better and better, the notes will become more and more accurate. And they're pretty, they're very accurate. I would say they've already surpassed the accuracy of human scribes. But let's do a more specific note. So let's say you see a patient only for a lumbar puncture, you just need a procedural lumbar puncture, and you could put this as a procedure. 
this doesn't look anything like a normal note, right? Just a, just a lumbar puncture note. And so you say, all right, here's what it looks like. Procedure, diagnostic, lumbar puncture, indication, informed consent, et cetera, et cetera. You can just kind of throw this in there. Or for a laceration repair, you know, we want an HPI, but we also want to talk about the anesthetic, the preparation, and have a little procedure note here. So if you have a very specific type of note that you want to do, you're going to go ahead and um, use a mirror note for that. Now, before you dive into the mirror notes, again, I would recommend that you book a demo. Okay, it's really easy to it's really easy to have trouble getting mirror notes exactly how you want, and we have people we have people working full time to take calls to help show you how to do that. So go ahead and hit book a demo, and we'll show you how to do that on a call, and help you make notes specifically for what you're looking for. Now, let's move on in the tour to these other sections, inpatient and dictation. We've already covered a lot of ground here in outpatient. That's the most complicated. I'm going to show you how inpatient works here. So an inpatient note is the type of note that is made if you're going to go see a patient that probably doesn't speak back to you or is intubated or doesn't speak very much. And it'll give you a very specific type of note. Or maybe your talk to them is very short or maybe you're rounding and you want to write a very you want to write a specific type of inpatient note and you'll see what that note looks like here. So I'm going to grab patient one here. I'm going to go in and begin the recording. All right. So I went over everything that we were talking about with this patient. I hit stop. Now when I finalize, you'll see here that there's only two sections here, or you can do a mirror note for an inpatient note. It'll give you a clinical discussion and then a systems-based assessment and plan. I'm going to go ahead and extra AI power this one, and you'll see kind of what it does here. Okay, so here's the clinical discussion. Patient is an ex-year-old male with a past medical history significant for suicide attempt subsequent fractures. Fell from a third story window. So it gives you all of the it gives you all the clinical discussion. It's kind of like a combination of some exam, what's happened in the hospital, plus history of present illness. So it's not all entirely subjective. It's the clinical discussion. Okay. And now it'll give you a systems-based assessment and plan based on all of the systems that I talked about. You know, here's cardiac, pulmonary, intubated on mechanical ventilation, continue mechanical ventilation. Uh, musculoskeletal fractures, post-reduction, immobilized fracture, repeat imaging, 7 to 10 days. Neurological subdural hemorrhage, stable, repeat CT in 24 hours. Renal, elevated creatinine, concern, concerning for acute kidney injury. Monitor renal function, continue furosemide, consider nephrology consult. Hematological, hematocrit, 8, stable, transfuse pack, red blood cells if hematocrit drops below 7. Anyway, so it'll give you a systems-based assessment and plan here. And this is kind of the note that you would be looking for if you are a critical care specialist or a pulmonologist. Or sometimes you're just seeing somebody that has a lot of different problems or you're an internist working at an outpatient clinic or you're doing geriatrics. This might be the type of note that you want. And that's why you would come into this inpatient section here. So this is outpatient note, inpatient note. Now... The final type of note that you would do here is the dictation note. With a dictation note, how this is made is it's for you to dictate the entirety of a note. So you want to try to dictate a note as if you're dictating a note to your scribe. Okay, And it'll do a good job of creating a note in that section. A couple of things that you might want to do you probably want to say the name of the section that you're dictating into um, so it can at least create that section and dictate into it. You want to try to enunciate pretty clearly, although it will do a pretty good job even if you don't. And you want to try to dictate a whole note rather than a portion of a note. I'll show you how to do just a couple lines of dictation if you have one sentence that you don't want to type and you just want to dictate one sentence. But let me show you how to do a full note first. So 
<clears throat> okay, this is for patient uh, George. Um, history of present illness. George presented to my office today. He had a little bit of a sore throat. He says he has four children who all go to daycare and all also have a sore throat currently. George has, um, and you can see that you can kind of like go back and forth on this and say other things that'll cut it out, which is great, but don't, don't go too heavy on that. <laughs> Uh, so, George has a sore throat. Um, George feels a little bit fatigued, and he has a little bit of congestion, but that's it. He doesn't think that he has strep throat because he's had strep throat previously, and his throat didn't hurt this bad. He's had these symptoms for about two days. He denies fever. He denies sleeping problems. Um... Let's go to the objective section. In the objective section, I just want you to make a note that he has enlarged lymph nodes. There's enlarged lymph nodes. Uh, my plan and assessment, my assessment is um, acute viral illness, and my plan is to um, do a test for COVID and the flu based on whether or not that's positive. Um, if it is positive, we will have him come back in a week and see if he's feeling better. Um, if it's not positive, I'm going to want to do a chest x-ray. So I finished that, and I'm going to go ahead and hit finalize. Now, this is something, <clears throat> this is something that you should notice. So... When you go to finalize the recording on dictation, you have five different versions of making a note of the dictation here. Now, here's a trick, and here's the reason it's built this way, is you can just select all five, and when you hit submit, it'll give you five different notes. And you might say, well, you know, one of these versions isn't formatting the note exactly how I want. Don't worry. Just select all five, and you will get five different notes. So here's the smart dictation version. Here's the subjective, objective, and here's the assessment and plan. Here's the auto soap, where it just puts it in an automatic soap note version. George, history of present illness, objective, assessment, plan. And we got the HPI dictation. So the HPI dictation is basically just trying to put it all into a narrative. AI decides dictation. This is the one that just gives total leeway to the AI. Make a note however you want. So you see it even put it put a follow-up section in here, even though I didn't ask for that, and that's AI decides dictation. And then the formatted dictation, this is just going to format what I said almost word for word, if possible. Okay, so if this is how, how I do it when I use this for dictation, is I always select all five different types of note, and I just click on the note that I like the most, so... I think that I just like this smart dictation the best. And I go into my EHR, and boom, there's my note in the EHR um, from the dictation. Now, let's go back, and let's say that you want to just do a one sentence in your dictation uh, because you didn't want to type it, and you hate typing. Um, usually, if it's something really small, I would just encourage you to type it instead of doing the dictation, but... Upon examination, George's arm appears broken. So you can just put one sentence in, and you can just copy it from right there. But if you do want to finalize the note and get that one sentence or just a paragraph, and you want word-for-word -word dictation, the way that you would do that is you, not, you don't take that first transcript, because remember that first transcript you saw is the low-power artificial intelligence? The high-powered artificial intelligence transcript shows up at the bottom of the note right here. Upon examination, George's arm appears broken. And you can just copy that and add that into your note, if that's how you want to do it. Um, again, this system is made to create a note rather than to create a 
um, to, it, it's not made for just a couple lines of dictation. It's made for a full note to be dictated to it. Okay. So, anyway, there is your walkthrough of how to use all of the features of Scribematic. Uh, please reach out through chats if you have any questions. Send us an email. Give us a phone call. Or we would love for you to book a demo right here. So, anyway. Talk to you on the next release.